morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is the first time in history your van has been packed better than mine. That's not uh, like on not this true. trip. I mean, the whole trip your van has been packed better. Right. Okay. I don't even know where my camera bag is. Oh, there it is underneath everything. It's definitely getting to be the end here in Iceland. My van is a mess and I can't remember what deep sleep feels like. It's been nine nights sleeping in this tent in broad daylight. I'm tired, but there's still a bit of an adventure to be had. But first, today's video is sponsored by Squarespace.com. Squarespace is an awesome place for photographers or anyone really to build a professional looking website really quickly. There are a lot of community driven aspects that go beyond building the website as well. For example, you can make a gated community area to both earn revenue and connect with your audience. And if you're looking to streamline your photography business, there are loads of options to integrate third-party e-commerce programs, which allow you to take payments, manage inventory, promote products, and even streamline your bookkeeping and accounting. Of course, all of this is a bonus beyond the beautiful and easy to use Squarespace website templates they're known for. So head to squarespace.com slash Brendan Vanson for a 10% discount on your first purchase. We cruised along the South Coast past some iconic spots, but the goal of this trip is to see quote unquote new places. So we skip by them pretty quickly. What is going on? We are in Vic. This is now Southern Iceland. And uh, we're at the famous Vic Church. We're gonna photograph this. If the weather holds off, the sea stacks in the distance. And then tomorrow we're gonna try to photograph a place I've never been lucky enough to photograph, which is High Foss. So that's what's going down. Let's make some pictures. Okay, I'm in the Lupins, and there's two photos I kind of had envisioned when, when coming here. The first was the Lupins in front of the church. And the reason I'm where I am isn't because this is the best composition. It's just that the sky is the most epic that direction. It's absolutely awesome that way. And I'm playing around with something that I'm not sure is working. So I guess I'll let you guys decide and I'll post both. But what I'm trying to do is a longer exposure. There's not a whole lot of wind right now, but there was a second ago. And what I wanted to do was play with like a 25, 30 second exposure and get some movement in the lupins in the foreground and almost create a weird depth of field. I don't know if it's working or if it just looks like I have an out of focus photo. So I'm gonna do that and then after I'm gonna do a quicker, you know, like one fifth second exposure to get sharp lupins. That's photo number one. I think it's coming out pretty cool. And again, let me know in the comments what you think. In the end, I edited the photos and I decided that the short exposure images were boring. In fact, it was so boring that apparently I deleted it. But I'm very happy with these long exposures. So I'm not even mad. After making the images, I decided to hike uphill to see if I could make another image from above. I left alone looking for some peace and quiet. So of course, Greg decided to buzz me with his drone. Disturbing my peace even more so was the lack of an image up top. I spent ages wrestling with the scene, rolling around, looking for different angles, and just not finding anything all that impressive. I mean, it's beautiful to look at, but in photography, you have to separate the personal attachment to a location and photo and try to imagine you're looking at the image as a third party person who has never been there before. So I'm sitting on the ground up higher um, and it's not a good photo. <laughs> I thought it might work, but the higher you get, the more of town you show and town in this neighborhood is a school that currently has some construction on it, some farm equipment, and some houses that don't look particularly nice from the top. It's just not a good photo. I've tried to do some things like hiding them with the lupins, but then the lupins are now distracting uh, from the church. It, it just doesn't work. Uh, 
So I'm gonna call this a shoot and uh, wait one and a half hours for sunrise and go down and photograph the beach. During the dull hour of midnight, we wandered out to see something I'd never seen before, the Yoda Cave. And we killed some time there by having a gumboot race along the black sand. And let's be honest, I'm no Forrest Gump, but let's replay that back in full speed. Ah! <laughs> nice. Then we headed to the treacherous shores of Vic Beach. Okay, so we're at the Black Sand Beach here at Vic. As you can see by this sign, it can be dangerous and deadly and actually, sadly, people die here quite often because they're not careful. I'm going to be careful. In fact, I'm going to try to do something I've never done before, which is take a photo in the cave over here, as long as it's safe to get there. I have uh, come to this beach eight or nine or ten times, but usually I'm here in the winter when sunrise is ten in the morning. By ten in the morning, tour groups are already here and it's packed, and I've never been able to make that photo I've wanted to make. So today, I'm going to try to, if it's safe, go around the basalt here and get into the cave and try to frame the cave with the sea stack. So we'll see if that works out. This beach is no joke. If the tide is coming up or hide, don't try to get to this cave. The sneaker waves are a real thing and it might seem calm, but they can come out of nowhere. And no photo is worth that sort of danger. Okay, so we're in the cave and it's not sunrise yet, so there's not a whole lot of light, but I have my Nisi 15 millimeter lens on and I'm getting the whole cave and I actually just ran out into the frame and I stood in the water. Now, this is definitely a don't do what I just did moment. This is an extremely dangerous place and that's a risk that I took because I'm pretty knowledgeable about things and the way they happen here. But to get the photo to be cool, your feet have to be in the water. And they have a thing called sneaker waves here. And if you do that and you don't know what to look for, you can die. Honestly, I'm not taking this lightly. Don't copy the image I just did unless you are extremely knowledgeable about this stuff. So anyways, back to the photo. Got the frame. It's about 15 second exposure. I set a 10 second timer. I waited for a wave to come all the way up. Then I hit the shutter to start it. I ran out within that 10 seconds and then I stood still for a 15 second exposure to give that ethereal look to the photo. I needed to put myself in the frame from a composition standpoint because it's just not balanced otherwise. You have the huge cave, and then you have the two sea stacks in the distance and nothing on this side. So that's the balance. That's the reason the photo works. And I would love to get this with Epic Light, but I think by the time there's Epic Light, there'll be a lot of other people here. So we'll see if that happens, but if not, I'm happy with this. In the end, the light didn't get better, but I do really like how this photo came out. It's ethereal, it's cool. And after Greg grabbed some smashing drone footage of the coast, we headed to the second photo location of the day. Today is working. Although, I don't think my sock drying technique is working. It's amazing they stayed on. <laughs> I was trying to dry off my socks. Bit of a fail. In the rain. <laughs> Pop it out.
North of Vic with fresh socks, we enjoyed the views. In fact, we enjoyed the views so much that we totally forgot to talk about the images we made. But I do really like this 30 second exposure of the arch rock and sea stacks. And after a drive into the interior of Iceland, we arrived at the place I've been most looking forward to on this entire trip. It's crazy windy, but we've made it to Haifoss. And for the first time in my life, I can see it. I've come up here three times, including way back in the day, like the first time I was here, I camped back when it was still legal to do so. I camped up here for two days in the fog and couldn't see the falls. The light is so-so, but I'm just happy to be able to see these falls. Now, the wind is crazy. It's blowing us around a bit, but hopefully we can get a photo regardless. Windy is an understatement. Although with no trees or grass, it's kind of hard to prove that in video form. But believe me, there was wind, and it was epic. I think of all the places in Iceland, the one place that epicness can't be shown to its fullest on video is here at Highfoss. This place is overwhelming. Okay, so this is one of the epically underrated places in Iceland. This is so special and just epic. I actually don't know if there's a more epic photo or epic waterfall in all of Iceland that I've been to. It's just insane here. You have the two falls. Actually, there's more than two. You have the valley and it's just epic. There's no other way to describe it. I've got my camera on the cliff edge and I have the legs way out just to hold, uh, not even for stability. This doesn't make it much more stable. It just makes it less likely to fall over completely. And then I've got a three stop hard grad ND on. And there was some color in the sky. It's kind of disappeared now. Um, and then there was a random photographer on the cliff edge over there as my little tiny subject to give it, to give it scale. And I think I've already got my photo, so I'm happy. Wrap it up, let's go home. There is no better feeling than wrapping up a photography adventure with one last great location and photo. It adds a sense of accomplishment to a trip like this. So we wrapped up. We headed back down into the civilization of Reykjavik. It was an awesome trip. Icelandic midnight sun, mission accomplished. We are back in Reykjavik and it's midnight and there's still some light hitting the church and this trip has been insane. We've been at it for 10 days, nine of which we spent camping and normally on an Iceland trip you get a little bit of a break because the weather's bad and you just have to hide away for a day or two or three. Not on this trip. On this trip for 10 days we've just been smashing through photo after photo after photo, location after location. It's been crazy and it's been awesome and it's made me want to go back to a couple places, particularly the East Fjords. I think maybe in 2024 there will be a scouting trip or a full photography retreat or something like that in Iceland 2024. So if you're interested in that, head to my website, sign up for the newsletter, or just check out what other trips I'm doing. And as for life, the next stop is Greenland. I'll see you there. Peace.